Today you have an introduction to our new study in the Book of Romans with Pastor Mike Hilson. You'll have music from the New Life at Your House worship team and the launch of the Carry Bible app all here today at New Life at Your House. Here at New Life at Your House, we exist to help you love God and love people better every single day. That's why we provide this church service, which is designed specifically to work in any environment. It could be in your living room, it could be right in the palm of your hand. We just want to help you create wherever you are into a place of worship. And we also want to help you find creative ways to gather safely with others. Um, and you've probably heard us use the term watch party. And what a watch party is, is when anybody is watching with somebody else. You could be watching just the two of us like we are today, uh, or with your family or friends or a larger gathering, we want to provide you coaching and training to help you reach your family, your friends, and your community. It's why we exist. We just want to get the message out everywhere. So today we view ourselves as guests in your home and that you've invited us in to worship with you. Yeah, so before we start worship, if you're viewing for the first time, please text the word NLYH Connect to the number 94000. Yeah. This is the easiest way to learn more about the value we can bring to your life, whether it's just to learn more about our ministry, mm -hmm. ask for prayer, or sign up for Starting Point, or learn more about watch parties. All right, well, hey, we're about to begin, uh, but before we do, we always wanna take a minute to pray. We're gonna pray for you today that you'll get the most out of your view viewing experience. So pray with me now. God, we love you. We thank you so much for who you are, that you've revealed yourself through so many means, through creation itself, through, through your word, through Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we just pray that you administer to every single person, whether they're watching right now on the palm of their hand or on a large screen TV with a bunch of friends around. God, we just pray that your presence would be with them, that you would speak to them, that you would illuminate all that we're gonna hear today so that it would make an impact in their life, so that they can love you and love others more. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to get out of the way. We'll see you after worship. We're going to start with scripture today. Romans 5, 5 through 8 says, Hope does not put us to shame. Because of God's love, it's been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that was given to us. But right at the right time when we were powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, you are the king of our hearts. Please fill this room. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, you're good. good you're good oh when you are good you're good oh you are good you're good oh let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the end the fire.
never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Thank you, Jesus, because you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. No, never, because you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, all the time, all the day, oh, you are, you are good, you're never, never gonna let me down to cause you are good, you're good, Yeah. As the spirit is moving over the waters, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the spirit is moving over the waters, spirit come move over us. Come rest on. Rest on us, hey. Just as the spirit was moved over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on, come rest on us, hey. Come rest on us. As the spirit was moved over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. I know you 
me. I know you feel me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. Hey. You're all we want. The Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all Cause as the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. One more time, say. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Spirit was as the spirit was moving. Over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. So God speaks in a variety of ways. He does it through music, and that's why we always worship through song. He does it through creation. That's why we like to go on long walks, and we love huge, yeah. you know, ocean and Grand Canyon, all those things. But more arguably than anything else, he speaks through his word, through the Bible, and especially when we read the Bible in community. So that's why we're excited to announce our launch of the Carry Bible app here at New Life at Your House. To explain more, watch this brief video praying about this year and we've been praying for God to show us more of who he is of course and how can we be more like him who are we as a church what is new life at your house and what can we do this year to become more of that and some of the words that he's been showing us is one of them is focused I believe that God wants us to be a focused church that there are a lot of people out here that that call on the name of Jesus and they are distracted by the things that the world's distracted by and they're set apart they are set apart, but they're set apart sometimes misrepresenting who Jesus is. And that's a fear of mine. We don't wanna be like that. We wanna be a church that's focused on Him. And that being focused on Him is being focused on love. It's being focused on the person next to us, the person that that needs help or, or the person that, you know, is in our family and we've just never talked to about Jesus. We wanna be focused in a way that gives us intention when we look at our days, when we look at what's in front of us and how we can in every moment surrender to who the Holy Spirit wants us to be instead of who we want us to be. 
but we also want to be a church that's loving. And we say love God, love people all the time. God has been showing me that loving isn't always just talking about it. The gospel does speak for itself and the Holy Spirit can move and change anyone's heart. That's not our job. Our job is to tell and his job is to work in people's hearts. But he also shows us that we need to love in a way that's practical. We need to see people's needs and we need to try our best to meet them. If someone's hungry or if somebody needs a ride to a doctor's appointment, the things in everyday life that we could do to be a practical help to people, to be loving to them. And we also wanna be a church that's growing. We can't do either of those, uh, those things if we're not constantly growing because it's not about being focused and being loving and helpful so that people think we're good people. It's about doing all of that from a source, from our well being filled up, from us knowing who our God is and giving him the glory for all of it. We need to be a church that is growing so that we can be focused and loving. And the only way to do that is to be more connected to our creator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch this app that is just a tool to help us get into his word daily, a tool to help us pray daily, a tool to help us talk with each other, states away or countries away, be a church that is translocal and kind of give us the, the relational tool as well to grow in this way as a church. Okay, so the app's called Carry. This app breaks it down to where you can spend 10 minutes a day, five minutes a day. You can do it first thing when you wake up. But one of the big things that this does is it starts to build rituals and habits and routines in your life. When you watch the way that Jesus lived his life, Jesus, when he came and he taught, he didn't just teach with his words, he taught with his actions. And what Jesus did was he took time to be by himself. He took time to study. He took time to pray. He took time to take care of his soul so that there was an overflow that happened and he was able to serve the people around him. The more that you have conversations with people, the more I have conversations with people, we realize that we all want the same thing. Peace, we want joy, we want love, we want self-control, we want all these things. The Bible talks about this being fruits of the Spirit. These are things that are given. These things are, are given as we pursue God. But the problem is we look for it everywhere outside of God's Word. So people that have been looking and have been searching and have been seeking, but they don't want to step into a church because when they stepped into a church before, they felt like they were being judged. There are people that have sour tastes in their mouth about Christianity, about the Bible, about Jesus, but it's because they don't know Him. And it's because they haven't dug into the Word. They haven't let the Word get into them. And this gives us that ability. Coming every single day expectant that God's gonna speak to me, that He's gonna do something because His Word is alive and His Word is active. And as we pursue him in that way through scripture, we'll see what he means when he says, if you move toward me, I'll move toward you. So let me walk you through a couple of the key features. The first one is when you open up the app, it's obviously just you click on today's study and you can read together with everybody. It takes you directly to the scripture. Uh, under that on the main page, you have study discussions. And look, just about every day after you read, there's the opportunity to have a discussion based off of what you just read. This is a spot to dig into the questions. Whatever it is that comes to your mind that day, use it because that's where you're gonna get answers. That's where you're gonna be able to help other people. You have prayers, you have gratitude entries, uh, you have uh, the, the group chat, you have private messaging. The point is, is this app is easy to use, it's easy to navigate, and before, if you thought you had excuses why you weren't digging into scripture and why you couldn't find the peace and the joy and the love and the, these fruits of the spirit that we hear about, now's your chance. I fully believe that a daily Bible reading habit will have a personal impact in your life where God can change you. He can change the every day of your life. But I also believe it will have a church-wide impact where we see new life at your house multiply. We see people want to know God just because they see it in you. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take out your phone. Look, if you're at a watch party right now, you guys can do whatever you want. So just take out your phone, pause video, something. Take your phone out, text Bible group to 94,000. If you're watching online right now, or maybe if you're, if you're driving, you shouldn't be watching this at all. So 
put your phone away. Uh, it, but anybody, look, take your phone out right now, Bible group 94,000, and you will get the text message back and then you get to choose your favorite pastor. So do you like Pastor Mike more or do you like Pastor Dave more? This is, you'll get a link back. You can click on one of their names, but you will join their Bible group. So you get to engage with other people that like that pastor more. I'm kidding. It's about Jesus, not about Pastor Mike, not about Pastor Dave, but you get to engage with them. Imagine reading the Bible, not understanding something, being fr- that was weird, whatever just happened. Being frustrated with something and being able to text Pastor Mike, text Pastor Dave and say, hey, I don't understand this, can you break it down for me? You have the community of people that are reading scripture with you and you have a pastor who's been studying this and living this for years that's ready to engage, ready to talk. Get your phone out and do it right now. It's easy to navigate, it's easy to use. It's my daughter, she's adorable. That went away, use it, love you. Y'all are definitely going to want to download Carrie and get into one of these groups. This is gonna be a key way to not only grow in your faith and your study of the Bible, but have the guidance of our pastors along the way. Yeah, actually, we already have groups prepared and everything. We can't wait for you to join. Yeah, all you have to do is text Bible group, one word, to 94,000. Yeah, so why are we diving so deep in the word this year? Well, because the whole year, we're gonna study the book of Romans. I know Mm -hmm. you're like, wait a minute, one book? Well, it happens to be a meaty book. If you've never read Romans before, you are in for a treat. It is the theological treatise of the New Testament. It is one of the most grand books written in the entirety of the New Testament. We can't wait to go deeper. Pastor Mike's gonna be leading us verse by verse, and you're gonna get so much out of this. So I just hope you enjoy it, I hope you love it. We're gonna get out of the way so that he can come and preach. Hope to see you after. If I got what I wanted, I know what I'd choose. My agenda, my own selfishness, my comfort, my tendencies. But then I do it God's way and I find what I need. I find I'm set apart. I find his peace sustaining me. I find his grace empowering me. Well, hey, y'all, welcome to church this morning. And we just heard from Pastor Emily and Pastor Curtis, and they talked to us about getting into the Word of God. I, I want to encourage you, this, this Carry app that we have is going to take all of us through reading the Bible together. And I want you to know why this matters. Scripture is life-changing. I w- listen, listen, the Bible is more than just a book. When you read the Bible, there, 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 there's life in those words. It's a living, breathing thing. I know, I know that's hard to deal with. I know you think I'm just overstating something because I want to put authority in the Bible, but, but I'm not. I want you to understand that sacred scripture has power all its own. The Bible is a living, powerful Word of God, and it moves in our lives. And just reading it, just immersing ourselves in it will change the way you think, it'll change the way you act, it'll change the decisions you make. Immersing yourself in God's Word will change your life. So I want you to join us in our Bible groups, and I want you to join us with reading. Look, there's no, you don't have to do this this at a set time every day. I'll be leading one of the groups, and I, I guarantee you, I won't be doing this at a set time every day. That's not the way my rhythm works. So what you've got to understand is this is a low threshold idea. This is a chance for you to get in at low commitment and yet get a huge return because the scripture is going to change your life. Now listen, scripture is powerful. It, it, it changes us. It, 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 it improves us. It empowers us. It does all of that. And he does that through a, I, how do I say this, a spiritual presence that I can't really explain to you. It just is there. But when we are reading scripture, we need to do two things. The app that we're going to use, and we're all going to do this together, is going to give us a breadth of scripture, a wide breadth of understanding. We're going to go to different books of the Bible. We're going to go to different places. We're going to read a lot of different places. Over the course of time, we will make our way through all of the Bible if we stay at it, but we'll do it in different spaces, in different places, but you need a breath because listen, you have to understand scripture as an overarching story. If I could get you to understand this, scripture is God's description of a journey, a journey from Eden lost, and Eden was the Garden of Eden. It's it's where God put Adam and Eve. It was perfect, no sin, no sorrow, no sickness, no death. It is a, a journey from an Eden that was lost because of sin 
to an Eden that is regained in Revelation when there's a new heaven and a new earth, an Eden that is regained through the salvation of Jesus Christ. That story of humankind is spelled out in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We see all of it in there. And as we watch this breadth of Scripture, we will be able to see the overarching picture. You've got to do that. Far too many people get too engaged with one Scripture, one verse, and they make that, that's my life verse. And they get in that one verse and they miss the overarching story of scripture. If you get into one verse and just camp there, you'll miss the story. You'll miss the account of how much God loves his creation and how much God will, how far God will go to save each and every one of us from the sin that so easily entangles us. You've got to understand the overarching picture. So you need a breadth of scripture. We also need a depth of understanding with Scripture, which means, yes, we want to read in a lot of places and we want to read a lot of Scripture, but we also want to take a lot of time getting deep in some of it so that we understand it, so that we can really unpack, what is this really saying? That's what we're going to do with the rest of this year here at our church. We together are going to walk through the book of, of Romans and we're going to spend a whole year doing it. Now, 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 look, don't, don't anybody panic. That doesn't mean I'm going to re-preach sermons over and over and over again. That's not what that means. It means we're going to take Romans a verse at a time, and we're going to work our way through it. Why Romans? We're going to choose Romans because the book of Romans is, many scholars say the book of Romans is the high water mark of the New Testament. What it is, it is the Apostle Paul's description of how salvation will now work and take place since Jesus has come, died on a cross, and risen from the dead, the means to salvation has changed now. Now, let, let, me, let me catch you up. Let me catch you up. I want you to watch this. In the Old Testament, the means to salvation was to bring an offering to the temple that offering would be, part of it would be burned as a burnt offering to God, and part of it would be kept for the, for the workers at the temple and for the people around the temple who had need. So that was how you came. You came and brought a sacrifice. In fact, you brought an animal. The animal was killed. Your sin caused the death of another living creature. So sin requires blood to be forgiven. And that was how you got forgiven all the way through till the time of Jesus. Jesus, Paul will explain to us in Romans, he's going to take us through it in such beauty and such depth and such just powerful imagery that he's going to give us in here to show us that Jesus gave us a new way to access salvation. He became the perfect sacrifice. I get ahead of myself. But this is why we're going to look into Romans. As we look into Romans, we're going to find out how we access salvation, what salvation will do for us, how we live once we have it, how we think. Romans gets into all of that. It is an all-encompassing look at what happens when God, through His grace and His presence, changes the life of an individual. So Romans chapter 1, verse 1, and, and listen to me, all we're going to deal with today is verse 1. There will be other weeks where we deal with vast numbers of verses at one time, and we unpack them together. Today, one verse. Chapter 1, verse 1, the book of Romans. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. I, I know you think this is just an introduction, and in many ways it is, but there's so much for us to learn here. Now, let, let, let's start here. It's the, the very first word in the book of Romans, Paul. Now, you have to understand, the man writing this letter is the Apostle Paul. But the Apostle Paul was born as a man known as Saul of Tarsus. His name was Saul. Saul, Saul was trained in all the best schools, Saul was trained under all the best mentors. Saul was a rising star. Listen to me, listen to me. Saul was a rising star in the ruling party of his day. He was a Pharisee among Pharisees, he said. He was, in, in comparison to the law, he was blameless. He, he had followed every rule. He was doing it right. He was a superstar among the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were the ruling party of the day. 
the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, these religious leaders, these rabbis governed, really controlled Jewish life in Jerusalem, in all of Israel at the time. I know, I know, I know. They're under Roman occupation. That's true. Their government is controlled by Rome, but their day-to-day -day lives is controlled by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and Paul is a rising star among the Pharisees. So Paul, look, his future is bright. He's going to do well. He's going to have position. He's going to have power. He's going to have wealth. All of that is in front of him because he's from the best schools. He's in the best group. He has everything going for him. Secondly, Saul of Tarsus is a Pharisee. Now, now, now stay with me because I'm, I'm going to, I'm, some of you that have been in church a long time, I'm going to rock your world a little bit by, by the way I view Saul. I believe that it is likely that Saul has encountered Jesus many, many times during Jesus' ministry. I believe it's likely that when the Pharisees came against Jesus to try to trap him, Saul was in the crowd when that took place. I believe it's likely that Saul saw a lot of Jesus' teachings, saw a lot of Jesus' miracles. I believe it's likely that Saul was there when Jesus fed the 5,000. I believe it's likely that Saul was there when Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. I believe Saul was probably there when they brought the woman taken in adultery and they threw her in front of the Pharisees and Sadducees in front of Jesus and said, and said, what do we do with her? The scripture says we should stone her. Jesus starts writing in the dust and the, the Pharisees start, I believe Saul was in the back of that crowd when that happened. I think Saul was there for an awful lot of this. In fact, we know from the book of Acts that when they stoned Stephen, one of the first martyrs for the Christian faith, when they stoned Stephen, Saul was there and held the coats of the men that stoned Stephen to death. So Saul has been part of this. He knows who Jesus is. He watched. Saul may well have been there watching Jesus be crucified and been cheering on Jesus' crucifixion. All of that probably happened. But then Saul, watch, you gotta stay with me. This is so important. Saul, a man with everything going for him, a man that the world says, you've got it all. You're doing great. Saul encounters Jesus in a spiritual sense on the road to Damascus. Now, everybody listen to me. You may think you know of Jesus because you have read about him or you've read the Bible. But what we are going to pursue in the book of Romans is not just you knowing of Jesus, but you actually knowing Jesus a relationship. That's what happened on the road to Damascus. On the road to Damascus, Saul met this person that he had seen many times in his life, the way I believe it. Saul met this person again, but this time it struck him in his soul. This time he saw Jesus for who he really was, not just for the title he carried. Listen, Far too many of us just see Jesus as, oh yeah, that's the founder of Christianity. Okay, got it. Jesus, good teacher, all that, got it. Good teacher, smart man, got it. Wish everybody else was like Jesus, got it. Hold on, Jesus is God. This is something that should reach into your soul and touch you there because when Jesus, when you encounter the risen Jesus in a spiritual sense, it'll change your life. It changed his life so much that Saul became Paul. Saul of Tarsus became Paul, the apostle, a servant of Christ Jesus, Paul. But wait, Paul, word number three, let's camp on that one a minute. Paul, a servant. Okay, Paul is the servant, Paul, a servant. But let me explain something. This word servant that we find here in, in the Greek, in the, original, in the original Greek that Romans was written in, this word servant is the Greek word doulos. And doulos... It has broad has a broad spectrum of meaning, but everybody, st everybody stay with me. Everybody stay with me. The word means slave. Now, now just stay with me. I know, I know we want to reject that word altogether. I get that. But that's what the word means. Doulos means slave. But there are different kinds of slaves. That's why I say it has very broad meaning. There are slaves that have been taken against their will. There are slaves that are working because they have no choices. But there's also 
a slave that is a bond servant. That word is different. And so in your Bibles, in the translations of this word, uh, this word doulos, your Bibles tend to use the word bond servant or the word servant. Why? Because a bond servant, stay, watch this imagery. Watch this imagery. It's so, it's so cool. A bond servant is a slave who could be kept by the master because he just can. It's a power thing, right? But sometimes people that have served as slaves or people that love a given family will choose, watch, they will choose to become a servant of that master. A bond servant is not like a slave. A bond servant does a lot of the same work that a slave does, but a bond servant does it willingly, does it because that servant chose to serve. And that servant is marked. That servant, there, there was a ceremony in the Old Testament that if a servant chose to stay with a given master, he would put that, that, that servant's earlobe up against a post and would, and would run it through and there would be an earring put in that ear that marked this person as a person who chose to be a servant of. Now we no longer use the word slave, we use the word servant because it's a chosen position. Watch, Paul who has chosen to be a servant of Christ Jesus, the one he used to fight against, the one he probably cheered when he got crucified, the one he used to try to help people trap in, 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 in word games, the one that Paul used to work against, the one that Paul used to chase after his followers and try to imprison them and kill them. This Jesus, once, once Saul of Tarsus met him in a spiritual sense on the road to Damascus, is so transformed by the experience of me Meeting the powerful spiritual God who is Jesus is so transformed with it that his name changes and then he willingly chooses to become a servant of, a slave of, marked as one who follows Christ Jesus. Paul is a servant. Now, what does that mean for us? I, I want to give you, an, I want to give you three words. The first one is Paul is a servant, right? But what does that mean for me? What, what does that mean about my life, about your life? As we encounter Jesus, as we encounter God's word, we must be committed to surrendering to his truth and his power. Listen to me, everybody hear me. As we go through Romans, you are going to read things you don't like. You're gonna read things you don't, dis, you, you don't agree with. You're gonna read, y'all, I'm gonna be honest. You're going to read things in the book of Romans in chapter one. You're going to read things in the book of Romans that make you angry. But when that happens, you must be committed. You, let, listen, we must commit ourselves now to surrender to God's truth. Then once we do, you say, well, what you're saying is I need to turn my brain off. No, I'm not. Please don't do that. If you turn your brain off, you won't understand what's going on. You got to think through this stuff. But when you encounter something in the book of Romans or any place in scripture, when you encounter something that angers you or that you disagree with, stop and process it. Use your brain, but process it from the vantage point. If I am committed to surrender to God's word, how then does this make sense? Somehow it's not squaring with my mind right now, so I've got to unpack. You know what, I, maybe you're sitting there going, this sounds just stupid. Well, okay, okay, I get that. I've been there, can I be honest? Even as a pastor, let's be transparent, I've been there. This sounds stupid, but pause. Go back to your commitment to following Christ. Go back to being doulos and ask yourself, why would God say this? If God loves us, and he does, then why would he say this to us? And then start to unpack it from that angle, and you'll find that scripture says beautiful things in places that you thought were just stupid. They actually become powerful and life-changing. We must be committed to surrender to God. As we continue through the first, Paul, who used to be Saul, a servant, doulos, a slave, of Christ Jesus, God incarnate, who died on a cross for us and is risen again, called to be an apostle. Okay, we started with Paul the servant. Now it's Paul the apostle. 
An apostle is, is defined in scripture and it is defined in church history as one who, who, who knew Jesus, one who walked with Jesus. Paul is the only one called an apostle who was not one of the original 12 who was with Jesus during his ministry. He was, again, again, let me tell you, I believe he was around Jesus. I believe he encountered Jesus many, many times as a Pharisee in Jerusalem, but he was not one that served with Jesus during his life. However, on the road to Damascus, when Jesus meets Saul there, he tells Saul, I, I love the phrase, he, he speaks to the, to the prophet that goes to Saul and he says, I will tell him what he must do. So Saul is now, how do I say this, drafted into the service of Jesus. Now I gotta tell you, when you read the rest of his, when you read his writings, when we get through Romans, you're gonna realize he is in no way unhappy about being there. He is by no means forced to be there. He chooses Christ, but Christ chose him first. Listen to me. You are gonna to have to choose to surrender to Jesus, that's true. But you must understand that Jesus chose you first. And an apostle is one, watch, an apostle is one who establishes new work. Watch, an apostle is one that expands the boundaries of the kingdom of God. Watch, an apostle is one who commits their lives to preaching the gospel of Jesus in every way and every place they can find. Look, if we're gonna be an apostle like Paul, we must be committed to the gospel. What is the gospel? The word gospel just means good news. And what it is, is the good news that Jesus paid the ultimate price. He was the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. And now every sin, every heartache, every burden can be laid at his feet. He will take them from you and give you forgiveness, give you grace, give you peace. Oh, I get ahead of myself. What we need to do is be committed to the gospel that Jesus is, y'all, Every day of our lives, we should be looking for ways to talk about the goodness of God, the goodness of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to change us. We should be looking for ways to say that. Can I be, can I, can I be real honest? You, our church, our church, I get our church that meets in your house or in different places, this is you being an apostle. Because before you started holding services in that house, there was no presence of the church in that neighborhood. Now there is, there is the body of Christ right where you are. We are being apostles because we are committed to the gospel. Paul, a servant, we need to commit ourselves to surrender. Paul, an apostle, we need to be committed to the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And then it says, watch, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, and look at these words, and set apart for the gospel of God. Set apart. Paul is a set apart one. I know that's not a, a smooth phrase. That doesn't just flow off, off your tongue. I get it. But we need to be ones who are set apart for Christ. What that means, look, we're committed to surrender to his word, right? We started there. We're committed to the gospel, the good news of Jesus, that he is the savior of the world. And now Stay with me. I'm going to use a churchy word, okay? We're committed to holiness. That means living our lives differently. That means being a set-apart one. Being someone who has been set apart, sanctified. That word sanctified, which is the root, which is the core of what we call holiness as Wesleyans. That word sanctified, it means set apart for sacred use. You know, the truth is there are some things, uh, when, when, when I first started in ministry, we, we, the church, the front of the church was set in a certain way. And what we call the communion table, what we would call the communion table would always sit in the front and in the center. The communion table is literally, the imagery is literally, this is the altar on which the offering is to be placed. So they would literally bring the offering plates and set them on the communion table. They would set communion on the communion table, What the, the elements for communion on that table, why? Because it's the body and the blood of Christ. It's figuratively the body and blood of Christ, so it's set on the altar because Jesus put himself on the altar for our sins. That, that's the imagery that was there. Listen, when I first started in ministry, it was a rule. You didn't set anything. You didn't set anything, anything on the altar, on the communion table, 
that wasn't sacred. I even struggled early on with setting flowers on that table. What, I, why would we put dead, they've been cut, they're dead flowers. Why would I put them on there? I walked into church one day and uh, it was Memorial Day weekend. And I walked into the sanctuary, not here, this is in North Carolina. I walked in the sanctuary and somebody had draped flags all over the place because we were gonna have a Memorial Day weekend. Now, proud to be an American, thrilled to be an American, very proud of our country, very proud of, want, want Memorial Day. We've got to remember those who paid the ultimate price for us. Everybody's got that, don't get mad at me. Absolutely 100% committed. But when I saw a flag draped across that communion table, I just had to leave the room. And I said, I, I wasn't preaching that weekend. So I literally left the room, left the building, went home and told Tina and said, I, I, I just, I just can't. And, and it, it, it's not that I'm, it's not, I hope I pray, I pray that the United States of America is always committed to, to celebrating the altar of Christ and giving us, giving us Jesus. I, I pray for that, but in the end, I'm not sure that's the appropriate place for it. Why? Because that table, watch, is set apart for sacred use. Your life should be like that table. What do you allow to be on your life? What do you allow to sit around in your heart? What do you allow to enter your world? Because those things you allow to enter your world, they will alter you. They will change you. When we allow Jesus to enter our world, he changes us. He makes us his servant. We surrender to him. He makes us his apostle. We preach about him. He makes us set apart. We live for him. I want you to hear me. I, I was meeting with someone multiple times. This has happened, but it happened recently. A husband who looked at me and said, I've got to rebuild my relationship with my wife. And here's the issue. And, and I, I said, look, and look, I want, I want you to hear me. If, if, you're going to get a little bit of marriage counseling for free right now. You ready? It is, it is a lot of men, every man I know who's ever fallen in love with any woman will say, I would die for my woman. And they mean it. Listen, they mean it. Those men would die for their, for their wives, for their girls. Those men would die for them, no doubt. No doubt. Why? Because that's a guy thing. That's heroic. That's me being the knight in shining armor. I'll take the bullet. I got it. Baby, you're taken care of. You see? Amen. But what I said to him is, the, harder, the hard part is not dying for her. The hard part is living for her every day. Waking up every morning and say, I, I cherish, I love, I serve this one. No other one, this one. That same relationship needs to exist between us and Christ. I wake up, I, I can say to you, I can truly say to you, I would die for Christ. If they said, Mike, deny Christ or we're gonna, or we're gonna execute you, okay, I'm going home today. It's just the way it works. But can I every day, watch, watch, in the monotony of every moment of every day, every boring moment that I have to make every boring decision, can I choose Christ? That is holiness. That's holiness, choosing Christ every day. You say, well, how am I supposed to do that? It's just never ending. I've got, that's going to be so, that's going to be so, that's going to be awful. I got you. But watch, when you're immersed in God's word, it keeps your mind focused on God's person and it releases the power of God's spirit in your life. And the word of God returns to you in those mundane moments when you have to make the right choice when the wrong choice looks more interesting. You see it? That's why we want you to have a breadth of scripture. You're into your carry app. That's why we want you to have a depth of scripture and we look into who Paul is and what he has to say. To the, book, to, to the people in the book of Romans. Now watch, we must commit ourselves to surrendering, choosing to serve Jesus. We must commit ourselves in this very start of this. If we're gonna get everything we are need to get out of Romans, we gotta commit ourselves to surrendering to God's word and surrendering to who Jesus is. We must commit ourselves to the good news, the gospel, 
commit ourselves to speaking about Christ and teaching Christ, learning so that we can teach, commit ourselves to the gospel. And we need to commit ourselves to holiness. Because if we don't, we will find ourselves in violation of an awful lot of what we're about to read. It's time for us to commit to God and His Word. Pray with me. Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would just speak so clearly into our hearts and our minds as we enter into this book that is life-changing, this book that literally altered history. We'll talk about that later. As we enter into this book, would you open our hearts and our minds? Give us a willingness and a desire to surrender to your presence and your word. Give us, Lord, a willingness and a desire to be committed committed to your gospel and spreading that gospel and establishing your kingdom everywhere we go. And Lord, give us the strength to every day in the mundane decisions of each day and each hour to commit ourselves to holiness, following you to the best of our ability through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, take this book and change us and we will give you praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Now, before you guys go, let me just, just hold on before you go. I, I, in just a moment, uh, you know, uh, Dave and Emily are going to come up and they're going to talk to you about um, what's going on. But I just want to encourage you before you go, I want to encourage you once again in the art of giving. Uh, we need to continue to be a generous church. And so what we want you to do is we want you to text the word generosity to um, 94,000. And we want to ask you to give that way because that's how we sustain this work. And I got to tell you, if you, the things that are God is doing through your giving are powerful. And he will continue to do that as long as we're faithful. Thank you for being with us today. We hope that you found today valuable and that you're inspired to take next steps in your faith. Just like Pastor Mike mentioned, you can text the word generosity to 94,000. Right. And when you do, you'll have the option to become a supporter with a one-time gift or become a partner with a recurring gift of $25 or more a week, mm -hmm. or you could become a new life at your house tither. That's the first 10% of your income, which the Bible lays out as our guideline to give back to God what was already His. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just hope that every one of you will subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll get all the notifications about every video that we put out. Um, and you can like this video, share this video, do whatever you'd like, but we wanna make sure you don't miss out on any of our great content. Yeah. Plus, if you're watching on our website, we can hope that you'd save the website to your favorites. That way you can always find us easily. But at any rate, we just pray that you're able to hear from God today. That's the most important piece Absolutely. and that you know how much you're loved by him and by this family that you mm -hmm. have through New Life at your house and that you're equipped to do the same, to love God right back like he loves you and to love people better again today and tomorrow. So we just want to thank you for your giving and you make everyday impact, all the stuff that happens here at this church possible. Um, but before we say bye, uh, it's time for our kids service. Yeah. So our kids are so awesome. We can't wait for you to see them on screen. We just encourage you to gather your kids around to watch them right now because we believe that God has something to say to them too. We'll see you guys next week. God bless.
everyone, welcome back. My name's Haley and I'm your host this month. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Last week, we learned about changing our hearts to be like Jesus from King Solomon. He taught us that when we spend time in the Word of God, it will change our hearts. We also watched two competitors go head to head in a challenge to see who could pick up the most noodles using other noodles. Are you ready to hear about our game for today? Awesome. Today's game is called Power Tower. We will be giving the contestants two minutes to build a tower out of playing cards. Whoever can build the highest tower wins. Are you ready to see it? Great, then let's get this thing started. Our two competitors today are Janae and Rachel. Good luck, girls. All right, you ready for this? Yes, this, I'm ready. This is gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be really hard. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win. Mm. Mm. All right, well, let's wait and see. All right, you ready? I, uh, yes, as ready as I'll ever be. I know. All right, Set. here we go. 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 My hands are oh, shaking. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, oh. oh, man, I, I moved the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, you're so sweet. I think we can call that a tie because you had one first. I don't know how. But yours still is still standing. standing so. Mic check. One two one two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's play. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, we know we've been long here because of your love. We know you are with us wherever we go. You're there, we'll always be together. So sing along with me for all the joy he brings. It's going down. Get in the mix. We're not stopping. Get in the mix. The party's hopping. Get in the mix. Everybody say. Like this, have confidence. 
confidence to get in the mix. Clap your hands like this. Have confidence to get in the mix. Now clap your hands like this. God, the brook is dried up. It hasn't rained in such a long time, and even if the ravens keep bringing me meat and bringing me bread, I, I'm still gonna die because I don't have any water. What am I supposed to do? Go right away to Zarephath in the region of Sidon. Stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. Yes, Lord. I'll go right away. This is going to be a terrible day. Oh, man. Okay, I think, I think that's enough. One, two, uh, yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? Would you be able to get me uh, some water? I'm, I'm uh, so thirsty. Of course, yes, right away. And, and if you would, please, please, could I have a small piece of bread as well? I don't have any bread. And it's just as the Lord your God is alive, all I have is a small amount of flour and a small amount of oil. And I was going to go home right now and make the very last piece of bread for my son and I. We will eat it, and then we will have nothing left. Don't be afraid. Do just what you have said. But first, make some bread for me. Make it out of what you have right now. Is this guy serious? I will have nothing left. Bring it to me, I'll eat it, and then take what you have left and make some for you and your son. But if I have used up the last of my flour and the oil to bring him some, then my son and I will have nothing left. We won't have a last meal. Oh, this doesn't sound right to me. How can I share it? The Lord is the God of Israel. He says the jar of oil and the jar of flour will not go dry. You will have flour and oil until the day that the Lord sends rain back to the land. So I just want to get this clear. You want me to go home, make the last of my flour and oil together for bread for you, and you're telling me that the Lord will then fill my flour and oil? Yeah. Can I ask who you are? I'm Elijah. I'm a prophet of God, which means I've been chosen to tell people messages that come directly from God, just like this one about the flour and the oil. Elijah, yes, yes, I have heard about you. Okay, yes, I will do as you have asked. I sure hope this Elijah is a real prophet. I sure hope he is, and that God is really with him. But what if I didn't give it to him? What if I made this, and then I gave it to my son instead? Well, then that means that he at least would get a final meal, right? Oh, this is a tricky situation, man. Um. Do I trust this man? Will God really supply for me and my son? I mean, that, this is it. This is all I have. <sighs> okay, yes, yes. I will trust in the Lord and I will give this bread to Elijah. That is what I will do.
Here you are, Elijah, the last of my family's bread. I trust the God that you serve, that there will be more, just as you have said. You will not be sorry that you've shared this bread with me. God has a great plan for your kindness, and it starts with you sharing with what you have. Now go and make bread for you and your son. Oh, wow. Oh, praise the Lord. They are full. I have full flour. I have full oil. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is going to be amazing. Joshua, Joshua, come, let's make bread. The Lord has blessed us and we will have food. That widow had every reason to doubt the stranger. She was preparing the very last meal she and her son would eat, and then Elijah shows up asking for food. What a crazy moment she's put in. She knows exactly how much she has left and knows exactly how much bread it will make. She knows this will be the last thing she ever eats, and then she hears from a prophet that God has a different plan for her. Elijah has seen God work in amazing ways and knows that without a doubt, God will provide for this widow and her son. All she needs to do is be willing to have faith in God and to trust that what Elijah says is true. This story has a happy ending and the widow trusts that God has a plan for her and shares what little food she has. But sadly, not everyone makes that choice. Many of us hold on to what we have and won't share it with those in need. And we end up missing out on the plan that, God's ha that God has for us. We have to work hard to make the better choice here. Our bottom line is this, choose to trust in the Lord and show kindness to others. That's a lot easier said than done, but I've got a few questions that might help us out here. First, who can you talk to when you aren't sure of what you're supposed to do? Next, when Jesus told us the greatest commandments to love God and love people, did he really mean it? Why? And last, who can you show kindness to today and in this week? I hope you guys have a great discussion and we'll see you next time.